Okay, uh, hello everybody, my name is Scott, and uh, doing another live stream here, and uh, this should be very, well, won't be thrilling, but it's, uh, everybody who has a quality stack will be really excited. Um, so this is what we're doing today. I know the title gives it away, um, but one of the pieces of feedback I've gotten is wanting a VTX for the polystack. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start working on the prototype for that. Um, so Sean was nice enough to send me uh, one of his VTX modules. You can kind of see it there. Um, and that's super useful so I can use that to measure all the dimensions for when I'm laying out the board for it. Uh, but it's unlikely we'll get that far today. Um, basically what we're going to try, what I'm going to try to do in like the next hour or so is um, creating the new GitHub repo um, and then initializing all the PCB stuff. So telling the start PCB script where to output stuff and uh, what pins we're going to use out of PolySAC connector. Once we do that, we'll move on to the schematic and uh, we'll have to make a schematic uh, component for this and then we'll figure out how it connects to the, the flight controller. A um, couple of requirements we want. Uh, let's see if they're documented. Let's go to computer. Um, so this is the GitHub issue under the PolyStack repo. This is where all the new boards, um, the genesis will happen basically. Before they have their own repo, this is where, where we'll have tracking issues. So you can see like uh, I said, let's create a VTX mod. Digital entity said like pretty standard pinout. Um, 3-pin SPI, which is what we're going to go for, um, powerful 3.3 volt regulator, um, which I hadn't thought about, um, so that'll be good, 2 amps in the stack, so what I'm just trying to figure out is all of the requirements. This is like super early on. Let's open Shay's project too. So, so this is like get all the information and start piecing together what it's actually going to be. Um, so this is almost like the very researchy phase of it because I haven't PolySAC launched a couple weeks ago and I haven't allowed myself to um, basically design new mods. Uh, between the time that I would, like settled on the first dozen and uh, when we launched. So this is one of the first ones. I did the control board that I had, had started working on, but that's it. So this is the first new mod in a long time. And uh, I'll post here and then we'll, we'll start a repo. So let's, let's begin there. Um, once we have a repo, we'll have a keycap project. And once we have a keycap project, we can start piecing together the schematic. Um, and doing the research that we need to figure out, like what's the regular later going to look like, um, what power filtering are we going to have on board? Uh, I also want to have a high side power switch so we can actually turn power on and off separately to the VTX um, and all that. So let's just create a new repository. Hi, kitty. And I'm just going to call it VTX, because it's the first one. Um, VTX mod. And uh, now that we're launched, we're going to do everything publicly. Um, I'm not going to put a readme or a git ignore, because we'll actually grab that from a, another repository. So, boop, create repository. And I'm just going to clone it. Thank 
that's what's going to do it. I don't know why our, maybe if I do this, it'll initialize all my credentials. That worked. So now we can go to VTX, and there's nothing there, but we can. It doesn't have any commits. How boring is that? Okay, before we even get started, let's just take a look at another repository and copy some files over. In fact, we want to copy those two files, so. Code of conduct, license, not here. And this is the YouTube chat. Don't want to commit a README for the wrong thing. It's already opening the directory. Read me here. This mobs add a VTX. So this is kind of a stock um, stock read me message. The goal is that it doesn't change very much. and the wiki can be updated much more quickly. Logo information and save. License is the same. Code of conduct, so that we're all nice to each other. So we've got our basic repository set up. Um, I'm actually going to just close this issue now. Look at that, separate repo. Their breath is terrible. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize the project. Do that in the polystack tools. Python 2, there's start PCB. And I can never remember the format of this. Directory is 
copy that. Maybe I can't use ports. So use ports is important. It tells um, tells the script what things you're going to use. So we're going to have one SPI port that's going to control the um, the actual module, and then we're going to have one GPIO pin that is used to turn off and on the power. And uh, I think the way that we'll do that is we'll put a regulator on there, and that regulator will um, have an enable pin, hopefully. And so the GPIO will just enable and disable that regulator. So it looked like that worked. Now let's open KiCad and see what we got. Open in the M0 board. Yep, we've got a new directory with a directory in it. Oops. Well, that's not what we want. Let's try again. Actually, we could just run it. There we go. So this is the project we care about. Hey, kitty. See where that left us. So this is a brand new PolyStack project. We've got on the schematic side, we've got this blank slate. Uh, it said VTX in here. You can see that. Um, let's zoom in. It's broken out the four SPI lines and it's broken out GPIO one. And if we double click in there, we can actually see what it's done for us. Um, it's got both the bottom and the top connector, and I think here, in this case, we're actually going to omit the top connector um, because, for one, the module is too high. It's, it's very tall, and two, it's going to probably generate a lot of heat. So I want to experiment with having this always be a top board. Um, it's not something you should do very often because you lose a lot of flexibility, like that top spot must be occupied by the VTX then. Um, but I want to see how it works. So that, that's what we're going to do. And actually what we could do is we could delete a lot of this because we're not actually going to use it. So this port out we don't need because that's the top connector. And we don't actually need to do the hype increment either. Um, we do want to keep this block here because that's the memory and that's what uh, will allow us to auto config. So we will leave that. We okay, made our lives a lot simpler. And let's save that. Let's also open the other PCB file. Don't necessarily have to do it now, but um, we're going to want to delete all this stuff, um, or at least most of it. Everything basically on the top layer we're not going to actually need. So we could start by just doing that. So these ICs are doing the increment. Back. I guess we do have to think kind of carefully. Or we can just redo the circuitry. Do, do, 
Anyway, so this is me getting distracted by stuff we can do later. Um, but since we did that, let's also just do an initial import of everything that we just generated. I actually like to I remember that there's also a file we want from my ghost D, which is the git ignore. And you can see it has some keycat related stuff. So I'm going to add PCB. And there's no files that we don't, don't want to commit. We'll just commit that to them. Push that too, just so we don't forget. All right, so let's start doing some research. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a component for the VTX module that I've got. So if we just take this out. I haven't done much research on it. So this is, I'll show you, let me switch to webcam so it's bigger. So this is the back of the module. The top part is all the circuitry shielded in a thing. So I'm just going to create a footprint for the schematic that just has every single castellation. Uh, that you can see here, and I'm going to label it the same way too, uh, and then go from there. So, selected and we want to create a new part and we're going to call it the fx758 I think it's a dash 2 I don't know what the dash means it's just Oh, maybe that's a date code. All right, I'll just put that. Okay. Let's draw a box. And let's orient it so the text is, the text goes both ways. I'm already oriented against the FX. Part of the box. Oops. Here we go. Let's just do this. Antenna. I guess I should actually
Now we have CS3. Oops. And then on the right hand side, we got seven. Let's start from the bottom. Try to get it again. That's how it works. So, this is labeled A6.5. I have no idea what that does. That's kind of fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, Ben. And then there's a VN, ah, which would be video in. So A6.5 might be audio. I had forgotten about that. Um, okay. Not a power input, so a regular input. And it's been 11. Okay, so we did that. Let's move reference. And save it to a new library. The directory is TTAB vibes. Components. FX758 is perfect. We save it, and now we got to load. Then we just save and this. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do that. The wrong screen up. So I just uh, loaded the directory. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. And once that's done, we can add it. Voila. But I don't have any idea what else we need to do. So, uh, one of the things you can look at is look at Shay's project, see what he's got. This is a similar SPI controlled module. So this is interesting because 
got data select clock. So it must be just a one directional. That's weird. It must just be to the It's also weird that he's got plus three point three volts, but mine's labeled five. Let's also do see what we can do. Hey, that looks like what we've got. Three, DC characteristics, supply voltage, five volts, which we happen to have just fine. I wonder if we could put a speaker on it. Cool. I wonder how we can do that. I wonder how we do SPI. Okay, so it takes five volts. Let's see what thing. Have the same thing. Reverse table one. Oh, look, they have dimensions. That's awesome. And they've got three point three to five volts. Regulator is this? We definitely want powerful in filtering, but I don't think we want. It's a linear regulator. Up to one amp. Uh, the voltage is five to. 24 volts. So they must be using it to get 5 volts out. Oh yeah, and it even says here 5 volts. And they've got two capacitors here. They've got uh, 477, 103. I don't know what that is. We'll definitely put a couple capacitors on there. Converter. Hmm. Okay, so we need to figure out control the subverse.
<laughs> Use your finger to switch the channel. Fifty thousand pieces a month. Oh, I don't want it. The waistband. Oh, interesting. They say three eighty, not four hundred. Also by volt. Looks awfully similar, doesn't it? Let's just try again. It still doesn't tell us. It's actually tell us the SPI. Unless it's in Chinese. I'm just going to make take a guess here. I think that, well, let's go back to. Back to Shay's project, and let's just copy. So channel one we'll call data, data select clock. So what we've got here is uh, data from the master to the slave. So we will just mosey, and that's what, oh, that's not the right text. Master doesn't get any data back. So he said one is mosi. N means it's backwards. Okay. He's also got 10K resistors on there. I'm not sure why. It is a way to protect. Oh, it could be. No, I don't know. He also says it's 3.3 volts, but. This module says it's five. Okay, um, that's a start. We could also put the antenna here. XLR. Might have. Might have one already. Okay. 
Okay, the other thing, we're going to want a couple of capacitors here. Let's do one big one. Maybe even a couple big ones. I don't actually know what an LC filter is, but I think we want one. Save and one in parallel. useless to me. Look at this. Whoa. That's just stuff on the bottom. One big capacitor and one big. Yeah, this is what we want. We need an inductor before the capacitors. And there's a ferrite bead. Ferrite bead that we used. In the M0 circuit. Let's just see if we can figure out what that is. Let's open. You can it by itself. Point M0. 
zero board. So this is where it's really nice because um, I use the same component and potentially the cost can go down. Here's our inductor small. It's not useful at all. Bomb for it? Oh, I think it's a bomb. So what we need to figure out with the, this inductor is whether it uh, can handle the current that will potentially be pulling through it. It was like up to an amp, basically. Although it only said 400 milliamps, but I don't really believe it. And this is the part. One amp, 200 milliohm. All right, heat and chip. Look at that. It's an 0603. Let's see what it says. Moving current. Look at the Thousand, which would be plenty. Blah, blah, blah. We can always bridge it if we don't want it. And it's ten cents for one of them, so it's not like not like we're gonna add a ton of cost, but it should be. You know, we want to filter the power because the the power fluctuations that make it into the ETX show up as lines and that's Maybe we could also put potentially we can power our camera off this too. That might be might be good to put headers for camera. That should be okay because cameras don't suck a lot of juice. Okay, so for our power. We're going to put a couple capacitors here. I want to put a couple different values just because uh, the smaller capacitors are more responsive than the larger ones. And it should be pretty cheap. Inductor. Inductor. Bolts come in. I think I might just do one order of magnitude each, so. This one I'll do as a point one microfarad. One microfarad. And a ten microfarad. Because why not? Uh, we could double check that macrofab has house parts for all of these. Well, that's so slow. But we could even go down to this. 
0 1 but it's not a digital circuit so it's probably okay so here's a point 1 here's a 1 and a 10 that's the only time I have. the other one's 11 do not want that So that looks good. And uh, let's add some grounds. It's a power. I'm on a roll. I wonder what it would take to get audio. There's some pretty cheap microphones out there. I bet we could do it. Let's just, before we lose this, let's get it. I also want a diode. One of the issues I have with um, some of the earlier boards is that they can leak power back. Like if the microcontroller is talking to another microcontroller, it can leak power back. It's And then the other thing I want to put in here is a power switch. And I used a 500 milliamp one, I think. Um, the test jig, they have a one amp version of it also. So this is just my like collection of parts I've used other designs and this stock is actually what I've got local for prototyping. I'm looking for the STM keys. This one. My side power switch. Oh I'm flying in like an hour or so. Let me go check on my buttons. All right, they're almost done. Glad I listened for that. So yeah, this is the 500 version and if you just open up the data sheet you can find the one amp version which is the two seven let's see we have the two five yeah we want the two seven Oh, 
let's just see. All right, stream's almost done. I got stuff to do. So it's 59 cents, but turning it off and on is going to be well worth it. And that's for a single one. If you click in here, it can go down to like 40 cents, which turns out like a dollar. If you think it's a dollar too expensive, you can blame this. I think it's going to be well, 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 well worth it. Um, to be able to do that. So let's just see if we have a equipment for it. Let's see if it has. But I think we've got a component library that I can probably just. STMPS. I may have put it under the wrong name, but I don't think that the amount's going to be any different. Yeah, it's the mark is the 251. But actually, let's just edit it. Edit component with library editor. Oh, there's another. Two minutes. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> My poor live streamers. Nobody's watching right now, so. Ooh, duplicate. Two, seven, one. And we want to say select working library. STM power supply. Save it. Yes. And let's just double check. Once we have it open, just double check against our pronouns. So Twenty-three. Yep. Perfect. And it can take up to five volts, so we don't need to worry about. Don't need to power it off 3.3. .3. All right, so we save that and let's add it. Let's do this one. And a different one. And I'm going to put this. Let's just do this. Let's move 
let's just do it like one crazy chain. Probably not good for your anything really. Not good design practices, but it's just so cool. In, out. I'm making good progress. And let's see, I did act of low. We, actually, we could actually see. No, it's active high. Active low would be 261. So notice this is 60 cents. Let's just see. I bet one of them is way more common. We have more of the two six ones. And they're the same price. I want to do active high so I can pull it low. So it doesn't turn on all the time. So I want a resistor. The way I think about um, pull ups and pull downs is that it's like a default value for the line in programmers it's like if nothing's asserting it it'll be low let's use a 10k and then while we're at it Also, be an LED so that we can show when it's on. And in fact, let's not put it here, let's put it over here so that if the regulator breaks, we can tell that it's not working. And we can even put it on the other side of the room. Not my best schematic. I just need to make sure that our LED can handle five volts. I think it can. Yeah, let's use green. Green and red are house parts, yellow is not. So that's awfully close. We just need um, ground. Not ground. Fault. We probably want fault. Let's see what it says about. Open drain, fault indicator, active low. So that would enable us to pull over an amp. But I'm just not going to connect it. And so we're almost done. I wonder how the microphone works. Would that be cool? Maybe I'll ask Kyle. I'm going to go fly with him just a, just a bit. The last thing we need is a connector. And uh, let's do a three pin. So one by three. You. Maybe like. 
video ground power. Building power. We provide 12 volts too. Maybe. What are popular cameras? I don't know. We have an HS117. Let's see what we're on selling. We want all products. FPV gear. All he's got is the arrow. Five to twenty-two, so it could just take straight five. Although some of them work better with twelve. Oh, and it has a built-in mic. That's kind of cool. I wonder if anybody uses that. UCC ground video. I can just watch that. UCC ground video. Oh, we did. That is video number four. The audio two. I'm following my bad. Design practices are just too bad. Then let's see how he is. Picking up antennas. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. just have this name. Alright, I gotta go. How's it about ready? Anyway, that's uh pretty far in terms of schematic design goes for the uh new VTX mod that we'll be prototyping. Um goals to put on top of the poly stack and uh, have it be able to, it'll be controlled by the, by the VTX uh, or by the flight controller and be able to like change channels and um, change channels and be powered on and off by the, by the flight controller. So you can go plug it in, have your goggles on, do a stick combo or like have a switch that turns on your video um, when you're ready. It won't be able to change channel until you do that, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but I don't know of any other good modules that would be able to do that. If you do know a module that can um, change channels before powering up, let me know. Uh, we could do a prototype of that also. Um, anyway, uh, nobody's watched it so far, but uh, if you watch this in the end, uh, thanks for watching. If you want to know more, you can do chickadee.tech. Um, to buy your own polysac and uh, you can always email me uh, support at chickadee.tech if you have any other questions. Um, also post them in the, in the comments below and I'll, I'll see them there too. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully uh, follow up with another video when we get further into the, like, the PCB layout and actually ordering from Oshpark. Um, I also should get the boards for the M0 board today, so I might do a short, short update on the, 
on that. I don't actually have any of the parts yet, so I'm going to have to do an order. But uh, an order from DigiKey, but if I finish this, then I can order from DigiKey the parts I need also. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, bye.